So listen, my name is Bruce Mills. Um, I was a Joey leader, uh, a cub leader, and then a group leader at First Cherrybrook. And about seven weeks ago, um, I think that's a continual cascade of being a bigger sucker in scouting, really, moving your way up the chain. And then I became um, Assistant Chief Commissioner for the youth program, working with Randall. Um, First Cherrybrook at the time, just when I left, had grown to have the largest cub section and the second largest scout section in New South Wales. It was a group that had 168 members in uniform, um, 156 youth and 32 adult leaders. Um, so it became quite a large group. And um, Bell had asked me to do this session on welcoming a new family to the group because we had a few ways, a few techniques we developed, particularly in conjunction with the section leaders, about how we went about doing that. I don't have any slides. I think this probably works a bit better as a conversation because you've all had your experiences as well. And I think this is an opportunity to, using a bit of a framework as we go through this session, um, just to capture the gems about what you might be able to take back to your groups. Is that all cool? Happy to do it that way? So speak up as we go. Um, welcoming new family to the group. So I'll tell you a story about the first time I walked into the hall. Um, I, my, I was a scout, covering a scout when I was younger and I thought, okay, kids are a bit older, time to start. So my, I think he was six, six year old, maybe a bit older, uh, was starting Joey's and I had a younger, he has a younger brother and he was a bit too young to start Joey strictly, but they said, look, you, you know, he can participate if you stick around during the session, leave the city. So I'd stick around in the hall. And the first time I ever walked into the hall, I think someone approached me and said, are you interested in being a leader? <laughs> and I gave an answer which I actually can't give because no, I'm right being right. filmed <laughs> at the moment. But, you know, it's a bit like um, meeting someone for the first time and saying, do you want to get married? Right, and they say no, no, because they don't know you, they don't know who you are, you've got to go on a few dates first. And the, over, the, the overarching idea I want to leave with you about welcoming a new family to the group is that they are your potential leaders, right? You actually do want them to marry into the group, but you can't ask them straight up. You've got to take them on a few dates first, right, and break the ice and find out what's going to get things in common. <coughs> so just like anyone else, parents walk in and say, hey, you want to be leader? They say, no way! And it's certainly what I said. But you have a role in welcoming the leaders to the, the new families to the group and your section leaders have a critical role in that too. And the first concept around that I wanted to give you is put yourself... We've been in Scouts for a long time. We are totally drink, drunk the Kool-Aid, right? We're believers. Mr. and Mrs. Smith walk in, might not have been scouts themselves, never, don't really know any scouting families. Maybe they heard a bit about it through parents, through the school, because, you know, little Davo does it and little jo Davo's Johnny's mate. And they're trying to work out what's this scouting thing all about. So first impressions last. Is your hall clean? Is there equipment stacked up all over the place? Does your section leader have control of the section? Are the kids running around out of control? Because remember, these people are walking in. They don't know you. They don't know your section leaders. They don't know what scouting is about. So they're looking for clues, for cues, as to how well run this group is. Because you're just this bunch of people with funny names that they're going to entrust their most precious little snowflake to. So they're, they're looking, like all of us, well, you know, how clean is it? How organised is it? Are there newspaper clippings of all those awesome things you've been doing up on the wall? Are there photos of the fantastic activities up on the walls? Of course you've got them up. You must, and if you don't, start printing them out and getting them up really quickly. We just, um, you know, colour print to A4, stick them in a plastic cover sheet, fold over the top, pin them to the pin boards. But keep them going, because the parents are going to look around. If you don't have anything like that, how do they know what you do? So those first principles really matter. Work with your section leaders to make sure that they're running strong sectional programming and that they're managing their sections well, that the sections are well controlled because that opening parade that, you know, the new parents often stick around for, right? That's your great product demonstration about what scouting is and how you're going to work with the kids in the group. Anyone got a shouty leader? 
Shouty leaders in their group. Mr. and Mrs. Smith walk in and your shouty leader's going, Jays! Cubs! Come on! You're going to entrust your kids to that? So first impressions last. Clean hall, no clutter, sections under control. The next one is, if you're around, oh sorry, is there, sorry, before I go into the, any general observations on the old first impressions last? You're talking about Joey's and I'm parade? Yeah, well, as best you can. <laughs> Joey's get away with it because it's such a cute age, right? So they can um, get away with being a bit unruly, people expect it. But it's the way you hold, it's, you're effectively presenting the hall and what scouting is to these parents. They've got no idea. They're going to look for cues that aren't necessarily fair. You can have the best leader in the world, but if your hall is a mess and there's junk in the corner and the kitchen area over there has got pots and pans piled this high that are three days old, they're going to form a view. Yeah, I, I think it's um, <coughs> the first date thing is more important, okay? Yes. First, and the dates after that, okay? The first impressions, um, you turn up to a cab, cab night and you say, this, you know, um, what I usually do is say, let Johnny go in there. Peter, come over here. He's a, a, the sixer. Peter, this is, this is Johnny. Okay, yeah. And this is introducing to the leader. Now you, you look after him, will you? Then I take the, take the parents outside the hall where they can still look in and see little yeah. Johnny. Okay? <laughs> and that's then do the whole school you know, scouting and things like that and what I expect and things like that. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, my hall's a preschool during the week, so, okay, I can't pin stuff yeah. up on the walls and things like okay. that. Okay, fair point. Maybe have a notice board that you pivot out, a, but something like that. There, yeah. you know, so it's a, good, it's a good comment and um, Freckle here, who I got to meet at AJ 2016 because he made me lovely coffees when I was wandering around taking photos. It's a really good point and I wanted to get into that, which is, you need to make sure that their precious snowflake feel, they, they feel that their precious snowflake's safe. So yeah, get the sixer over, get the patrol leader over, make sure that they're buddied up and say, yes, we buddy them up so someone's with them the whole time and that's what we do. Now I'd like to talk to you. And if you're around on a section night, you can do it, but try and have a leader within the section who's set aside to do this. And so this is where you wanna start the dating process. So you wanna be interested, you want to be engaged, but you don't want to be overwhelming, right? So that's where you start talking about what scouting is. And remember, you can save all the stuff like the scout method, the spices, the learn by doing aspects, the technical aspects of what we do around programming to later. You want to talk about the sizzle, not the steak. You want to talk about the outcomes, the outstanding experiences, the personal development and how you get there and you know the things you did to get there. You can save the other stuff to later. So if you've got these photos, you can say, this was this camp, this was whatever. What I used to do and our leaders would do is even walk them around the hall, be proud of it. You know, this is where, where we do, deliver our scouting, this is where we do our program nights, we go camping. We'd unlock the queue store, show them the tents, show them all the camping gear and the, you know, parents who don't have an outdoor type um, culture, they're actually quite overwhelmed when they see a well-stocked queue store. And you know, if the kid was a Joey, we'd say, look, they'll, they'll do mostly sleepovers in the hall at their age, but later on in Cubs, we're gonna show them how to put up these tents and they're gonna spend a few nights on it and we're gonna show them how to start cooking. And when they're in Scouts, they're gonna actually do all of this themselves and they'll go to something like a Jamboree, which is a huge camp with 10,000 people in there. I think 10,000 people, this is, Right, and you're trying to you know, show them around. We'd, in our hall, we'd open the garage where all the canoes and the PFDs and co-carts and all that sort of cool stuff, and you'd have your own, right? And show them and talk about what it did. The kids helped make this, the fathers came in, we did this, you're more, wel you're more than welcome to come along to any of these activities. Is that sort of cool about, you know, so you're just trying to, you're doing the first impressions and then you're having a talk. You're not being overwhelming, but you're trying to demonstrate the output of what it is that you do. I'm not necessarily explaining how you do it, because they're, they're new, they're just trying to form a view and they're saying, oh, this, is, this could be good for little Johnny. Little Mary would really benefit from this. And again, the smiling photos and those sort of things, if you can do it on the wall. Any broad comments around that sort of stage of it, welcoming new parents to the group? So they've only been here for about five minutes so far. I, I think you've really got to push it. Look, um, 
first impressions is fine, okay, but it might be something that interests Johnny tonight, but do two or three weeks before you wait. I say do, do a couple of weeks and little Johnny will tell you, oh, I'm going back tonight, you know. Yeah. Or not, but if they're at the stage of, I'm not coming back, okay, you've got to try and get the parents to say, you know, bring them back. That's right, and look, I think the group leader role is the most important role in scouting, because the group is the fundamental delivery platform of the scouting That's product. Right. It really is. The group is where we deliver the true value of scouting to young people. That's the unit that delivers the scouting outcomes. And your role as a group leader, is, I think, is perhaps the, is arguably the most important role in scouting. I think it's the probably one of the most frustrating one of the most, um, uh, but at the same time, one of the most satisfying roles you can possibly do in scouting. So you set the culture. Any way, any way that you interact with these parents, your leaders are gonna see as well. So anytime if you feel a bit grumpy or you're a bit short or you wanna have a whinge, and we've all been there, and we've all got someone in our group we have those with, right? Because better out than in. But even if you feel that way, we don't do it to the parents or we don't say, oh gosh, you know, if only this was fixed, you know, this would have been so much better. We're putting that front foot forward so that they want to come back. We're creating an environment where they feel they can leave their little snowflake. And then you really want to start talking about what scouting offers. So those of you who are in a Randall's session this morning, he talked about scouting being a product and that's a view I really share as well. The youth program review is coming like a freight train, right? And there'll be a whole new program about that and that's fine. My group grew to having one of the, being one of the largest groups in New South Wales using the existing program. And what we took from the youth program review is what keeps kids in scouting. What makes them want to come back? And there was oodles of research done by the YPR during that stage. And this is where we start talking about parents because they've got needs. They've got needs that they want scouting to deliver for their little snowflakes. What keeps kids in scouting and what we'd start talking about is fun that this is fun. We are all here to have fun. I'm here to have fun. That's why I'm here. I'm here because I have fun. And I'd talk about the first time I was a parent helper on a camp. I'd talk about the activities I've shared with my kids, you know, the canoeing trip or whatever. I'd then talk about the opportunity to have, to make new friends. Right? And how one of the great things I've seen these kids have, the experiences they have is how they make new friends. How we do camps with other groups how they go on jamborees, how they go on the district and region camps. And these kids bump into each other two hours later on a different camp, two hours, two years later, and it's like they hadn't skipped a beat, right? Because that's what parents want. They want to feel that little Johnny and little Mary are going to make new friends and have a lot of fun. Sorry, sir. Um, oh, sorry. Um, two or three things I want to just start conversation lines over, possibly. Um, I've been around long enough to see the age of parents coming into the hall getting older. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Australia. I think that changes expectations. When parents were coming in and they were 22 and 23, um, and they were starting families, and they're just more youthful themselves, and they're more happy to leave their child in your hands than the parents coming in at 35, who have got more established careers, have developed something of a profession, have a, have a level of expectation that's perhaps a bit higher than the parents who were 10 years younger, I, I think. That's my, my, my I think, sense. Yep. That's one thing. Yep. Um, the second thing is that uh, I've recently, as a result of the GL training I saw on e-learning, um, decided to adopt a policy that used to be in place when I was a scout, but which has completely fallen away, as far as I'm aware, of visiting the families at their home. Yeah. Mm. And I started doing that with some trepidation, and then I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I found it was most useful to do all the stuff you were talking about as the bit you don't do in the hall. You do that at their home. Yeah. And then you, you pick up two or three things. Firstly, do both partners support scouting? Or is one cynical? Yeah. Is it mainly the mother or mainly the father? Is it single parent? Is it a 
blended family, and it's increasingly common. Uh, and the third thing I want to say is, you've talked about fun, and I had, when I came back to Scaling after an experience in post-war Britain, I thought it was all a bit silly to talk about fun because it was all much more disciplined. But I'm adaptable. In spite of age, I'm very adaptable. And I've realised that I've got more fun out of it now too. But a lot of the parents coming in say to me, I want to talk to you about what the values are you're teaching yes. the children. They've got really worried about where their kids are picking up their values. Yes. And I then am I'm very confident in saying, yes, we have a scout law and a promise, and we, what well, I mean it, and I make sure the leaders know I mean it. And they, they really appreciate that. Then I start worrying about whether I'm delivering it enough. You know, the fun's taking over, where's all the values gone? Look, I can, well, So, sorry, I've said three things. No, no, let, let, me, let me address those, because you're right. Um, so, if, I'll, uh, I'll give you a long answer, right, because I'll fit it into to where I wanted to go, so hopefully it fits together. The five things keeps kids in scanning that I would talk to about parents is fun, new friends, the outdoor aspect of it. And the reason you want to talk about the outdoor aspect is because in New South Wales in particular, we have these amazing densification scenarios facing our cities. If you go around Epping, Carlingford, parts of the North Shore now, Parramatta, out Western Sydney, something like 80%, 85% of new dwellings built in New South Wales are units, and it's only going to be more so. Right? So you have a genuine concern in the community from some parents about kids getting the experience of the outdoors. They don't even have the opportunity to kick around a soccer ball in the backyard. So a lot of parents are coming into your scout groups with that genuine level of anxiety, combined with the screens, right? Mm -hmm. Screens, you know? Um, you can play the equivalent of a, when I was, when I was young in the 80s, you'd go to the arcade, right? You, every kid's got one of those on their big screen TV at home. Then the internet attached to then the internet and all the content there and the YouTube and the videos, then the, then the phone and the tablet and the laptop, all of it, right? And parents genuinely have an anxiety about that. So talking about the outdoors is a way of dealing, gently dealing with the parents that there's a, scouting is a solution to your parental anxiety. It's often why they've gone in. And then we talked, so fun, new friends, outdoors. Then we talked about new skills and values, what we learn and the type of people we become, right? And how, how we move, th move through, how scouting can really drive those sort of outcomes. Uh, and then this final one is a sense of adventure. Because I think in modern society, parents are really hungering for a way to safely and responsibly give their kids that sense of adventure from childhood that um, I was probably the last generation that played cricket and rode my bike around until the lights, until the sun went down and then turned up at home and mum didn't know where I was. Mm. That's certainly not any kid's experience these days, hardly any. A kid who's having those experiences these days is being seen as being neglected. How old are you? 45, <laughs> 44, sorry, about turned 45. I was probably one of the last generation that you know stayed out until, um, and, that, and, ki and the parents still hunger for that, but they now want it in a different way. And they're looking for a service, a product, that can give them that. So we talk about those sort of things. Sorry, and you had a question about, so I talked about the values bit, but you other one, oh, meeting, going home. Look, <coughs> I had a professional role, I still do. I didn't have time to do that, so I did do it at the hall. If it's something you're able to do at home, I actually think that's outstanding. Because the bigger picture around what you're saying is it's not the kid that joins scouting, it's the family, mm. right? And that's where, again, but you're on a dating process, right? Because ultimately, welcoming a new family to the group is to keep and retain a member and then generate a future leader. Let's be honest, right? And people are going to help with your fundraising and all the things you need to do, the many hands that are going to make lighter work of running your group, right? So let, be honest about that in the first instance, but be aware of human nature. And human nature is if you ask them too much up front, it's too scary and they back off, right? So you start talking about what those outcomes are and you give them that great night because you're delivering great programs already. And then you want little Johnny to come back, but it's the parents who join. But I, do, I didn't generally talk about too much what was expected of them until the second or third night. And the reason I did that is because I wanted them 
to have some skin. I wanted them to be on the hook a bit. I wanted them to have a bit of pester power from little Johnny. So when little Johnny's come to the first night and he's had an awesome time and he wants to be a scout. Well, we do barbecues as well and we do these other things too and we expect the parents to do it much harder for them to say no then. Now, the thing I'll do on that second or third night is set a minimum expectation of what their contribution would be. And that's actually to do with how the human mind works. <coughs> it's getting people to make a commitment to the group. No matter how little, gives you a platform to build on to increase that commitment over time. If a parent can engage with your group in a commitment-free way, they'll continue to do so. All right? I'd turn up at work and play solitaire all day if I could, but someone holds me to a higher level of commitment. Right? And that, that's how, so we're high, we want to hold the parents to that higher level of commitment. So the second or third night, when they're coming back, and little Johnny's, oh, I love it. I can't wait to this camp, mum, and I can't wait to do this, and my friend from school's there, and I met this new kid. All the things you're doing, the five things that keep kids in scouting, you start saying whatever your minimum is, and that's up to you and what works for your group. We talk about a parent roster, you know, one night a turn, come help out, a couple of barbecues a year. Our group did a big movie night, and we'd talk about that as well. And we'd actually, for the movie night, we'd remit some of that funding back to the parents that we raised, not directly, but to fund, help fund larger activities. Um, whatever works for you in that space, but set a minimum commitment. So when they sign that Y1 and the cheque comes in or they give you the cash or the credit card transfer for little Johnny to join, they know that they're signing up to something. Right? And that's because of the way the mind works. So that was the broad process we used for um, welcoming a new family to the group. And then once they're in... So yes. as a group leader, yes. were you doing that for all sections, for all new people? No, I would do it if I was in the hall, but um, I happened to have a Joey Cub and a Scout, so I was there for most section meetings. Um, so I'd do it when I was there, but we had a dedicated leader in each section who knew it was their role to do that. Um, and we also, for example, would do that when, we'd, when we had our kids go up. We'd always have them go up in a group, once or twice a term, we'd have blocks. So we were happy to keep kids a bit longer or put them up a tiny bit earlier so they could go up in a block because they want to go up with their friends, right? You know, the worst thing you want is the little Joey standing by himself in a, cub, cub full of, a hall full of cubs being totally overwhelmed. You want two or three Joeys with him, same from cubs to scouts. But we'd even get to the point where those parents, they'd been around the group, we'd have a little info table on the, out the front on those first nights and we'd explain what happens. Because the parents are looking for that guidance too. They've been in cubs for two or three years, they're now in scouts and they want to know, do I have to buy boots? You know, do I have to buy a tent? And they're saying, oh, you know, do I need one of those $300 tents? And, you know, give them that sort of information. So helping them know how it works is really important. But I would do it if I was there and I love doing it. Um, but we'd also have a section leader who was said, they knew that's what their role was if someone came into the hall. Yeah. What you've said in your, all your introduction, I think it, it just depends on the demographics of the area too. It's good, it yeah. changes dramatically, okay, and the small, uh, you know, social, you know, area. Yep. And, you know, if you get one in five parents to do something, I reckon you get a lot. Look, I agree with you. So look, if you've got a depressed socioeconomic area, you will struggle a bit more to get the level of parental engagement that I'm perhaps talking about, but I think you can possibly do better than one in five unless you're talking about a really depressed area. Uh, in Doesn't which it case... Doesn't have to be a, um, a stressed <laughs> area. I mean, if they're all um, um, professional working people, yeah, so yeah, they they're harder, they're harder. No, no, no. They're no, not no, 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 yeah, yeah, professional no. at all. Who no, here... Uh, the most au pair of brings them. Pardon? The au pair The au pair brings them. God, that's all right. Um, look... My experience is that parents say no because they're not on board, right? It's just like being asked to be the coach of your kid's soccer team. Everyone's looking, never before do your shoes become more interesting, right? When they're asking that, right? Um, or when you're being asked if you want to help out with another community group or whatever, but what you can set an expectation around, everyone knows if you're playing soccer, you've got to do one, one session of linesman and one session of getting the fruit. If you're doing little athletics, everyone knows you've got to do a couple of sessions of timekeeping and helping out raking the sand pit during the day. 
You can do it for scout, scouting. You know, we one night a month and a um, couple of barbecues. You can set that minimum expectation. That's the key thing. Don't set zero. Never accept zero. And don't make it open and look at a specific time. Yeah, that's right. And so and you, you'll get a roster and you'll know the night. And if you can't do that night, just like soccer and just like little athletics, just like you're volunteering at the tuck shop, you swap with another parent. That's for you. So the, the, the key thing is don't, don't set zero. But what I do want to talk about is the parents who don't want to help. My experience is, is once you get above 30% or so of parents just not wanting to help at all, resolutely saying no, I think you go back to the first principles and how you onboarded them and start looking at that process again because you just will not have enough hands to make light work of running the group. I'm going to accept that there's people in dire circumstances and I'm going to accept that there's CEOs. Right? But I, I'm also going to accept that most people, just like I did when they said, do you want to be a group, do you want to be a leader? No, nah, because we haven't done the dating process properly. We haven't gently onboarded them. The key, where we got most of our leaders, when, at 32 when I finished, was from her parent helpers at Cub and Scout camps and Joe activities. Because what they do is they get the five things about scouting as well. They get new friends, they have fun, they make new friends, because you get to our age, right? And how often do you make new friends, right? You know, really? You know, but I made lots of adult new friends through scouting and through my local scout group. Um, they get to have new experiences. They get to experience the outdoors. And they get to ride the big flying fox at Cataract or crawl through Challenge Valley or whatever and have a set of adventure. And you can regress in so many ways to your own childhood. What other things do you do where you get to dress up in funny costumes and run around like a banana and pretend you're a superhero and all those sort of things? And when they see other people doing that, they might be helping out in the, you know, doing the kitchen work, which is the classic way, you know, the parent helper who's helping with the cook squad on a camp, but they see the leaders doing all this stuff. And then of course, when the little darlings are in bed, you're having a laugh and you're carrying on. Um, they get those experiences as well. And it's that process of letting them know what you and your leaders and your group and scouting is, and you build them up over time. And if you've done that well, you don't necessarily even need to ask them if they want to be a leader. They'll say, listen, I'm interested. You know, how does that work? Have you got any thoughts on, though, talking about onboarding the <coughs> member, bringing the parents on slowly, but then you're saying, you know, setting a minimum Expectation Once you've got the yeah. youth member really keen, yeah. so on the second or third night, because it's much harder for them to say no, because it's a bit of pest to parents, like I want the chocolate now. But then you've sort of said, okay, the expectation is you're going to, your child's on board, the yep. expectation is you're going to commit in some form. Yes. What's the on, well, you know, thoughts about having an onboarding process then for that, I, if you have a roster, Yes. What, yeah, again, they've got no idea what they're supposed to be doing. No, that's right. And you just say, look, and the, the section leader will take care of that. You just turn up on the night and you'll be given something to do. And you can see, and you can see that the Jones family are over there and they're doing the following. You know, you can see that they're setting up for a craft activity, putting out the paints. Right? That's what, I don't think any parent, any, any contemporary parent thinks that you can do a community-based activity, soccer or little athletics or whatever, without putting in an odd night and an odd helping out with something. They know that, but you've got to make sure you buy that in. The other one to have a conversation about is, you, this is some parents won't, will think that you're all paid and this is your job. And that's particularly common in, that's, pati that's particularly common in called communities, right? Lots of uh, people who've come from overseas will think that too. Um, and one of the things we talk about in the on board is everyone, everyone's a volunteer, no one's paid. And I've seen parents, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have experienced very, last, last week, a parent on the phone wondering why they're so difficult to get hold of me. I said, well, I'm a parent, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. home, I'm not I'm a grandparent now, but you know what I mean. And uh, she said, well, isn't there an office? I said, yes, so the whole South Clip region, there's an office with one woman one in it. Woman. Yeah. And she was shocked. Yes, and, but I, find, I think you pitch that, and it's like so many things in life, it's how you present it. So I present it as every single person in this hall, every adult in this hall with a scarf and a uniform is here giving up their time because they want to. 
because they believe in what they can do for the kids here because they have seen scouting shape and sway the minds of young people in this community for year after year and they want to be part of it and they have great fun. They've made a whole lot of new friends. It's the experience I've had and we hope it's the experience your family has with scouting as well. But we are all volunteers. And people start, you might have to say that a couple of times, but it can change a gear in their head because they start wondering why are all these people here? Is there some, maybe I should look a tiny bit deeper. Yeah. You actually started out well and not done all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I didn't start out like that either. I made plenty of L plate mistakes when I became a group leader. How do you come back? You just start. You, look, the, you know, it's, the, it's the, the, the longest journey starts with the first step. You just start and it just rolls through. And that's what I did. I made plenty of L plate mistakes. I became a group leader. I gave a presentation here a few couple of months ago. It was the same thing and no one rang me up and said, you know, no one from region. No, I'm from district, said group leader, gee, that's a big and important job. Let me give you some really good advice about how you should go about that. I just had to work it out for myself. So I made a number of L-plate mistakes, but I suppose my advantage was I didn't have a fixed way of thinking about what scouting, how it should be delivered and what scouting, what, what scouting required of me in my communication with parents. So I was able to work it out. And if you've got a background, I, I had a background in marketing and communications and I just reflect and I've reflected on my own journey and I thought no this is what we need to do is we are we are this is a, a relationship and whilst I can be proud of what I want them to have a relationship with scouting proud of my hall proud of my sections proud of my kids proud of my leaders I can't overwhelm I can't come on too strong but I need to gen gently bring them in to what I now see so clearly, but the first time they work in the hall, they can't see it all. And they're looking for clues, fairly or unfairly, about how clean the hall is, um, how, the, how the leaders are in, interacting with the kids, how well the parade's going. Do they see photos on the wall of kids having great time? And then having a talk to them, but not about spices and um, necessarily the, the promise and law in detail, but noting that they can exist, uh, that they exist but actually talking about the outcome, the sizzle, not the steak. You know, it's classic. We don't say, this is an E1 form. We say, this is the, uh, to let us go canoeing. We say, we went canoeing and the kids learned this, this and this. And it was fantastic. And look at the photo. There they are there. I do, a, I've, I've got a welcome letter. Okay? Yes. And it's four pages, okay? Yeah. And I bring that out at the beginning. Yeah. And I give them a copy. Possibly one of the least and read documents in scouting, like mine. Like my and, and, and I talk about it, okay? I skim through it. And it tells you about scouting, yeah. what scouting is. It tells you about your group and things like that. It tells you about your finances and things yep. like that. And it's got the scout law and promise on the back page. My, your expectations as a, uh, as a parent. Yep. And I say, look, I've skimmed through that, okay? You can take it home and read it, okay, and find out a little bit more about what's going, what you know, you're getting into. Yep. It. And then I go through the E1, okay, and that's when I, I start to find out a little bit about them. So, actually, can I talk about the Y1 in this map? Uh, sorry, yep, Y1. Yeah. So, Scouts New South Wales has not met a form it doesn't like. It really hasn't. I think the, I, I know the Victorian Chief Commissioner was here. And I think Victorian leaders are crying into their billy tees around campfires all over the state of Victoria because I've looked at their website and they've only got about a third of the forms on their website that we have. And they must be thinking one day we are going to be like New South Wales and have forms <laughs> this long and then we'll know we've made it. So, <laughs> scouting, in <New> South <laughs> scouting in New South Wales can be a bit bureaucratic. <laughs> And you have a role in trying to minimise that. So the Y one's a necessary evil from that point of view. So that's where you, what we would, sorry, what I did initially is I'd talk them through the form very quickly to say, just fill this in, do all this, bring it back next week. I'd check it when they're there, I'd get the leader to check it. But you're really trying to make the paperwork not a big deal. Because most people accept that they've got to fill in something. They just can't accept that it's a paper form in, when it's 17 years into the 21st century. Yeah, but this is the detail. You get to the second page. Oh, here's your parent, the parent of the same. Yeah. Oh, dad's still on the scene? 
Oh no, my partner, and yeah. she's a phone. Oh, is she? Oh yeah, she's yeah. a phone. Oh. <laughs> And, I, and, my personal and, view was I'd get into that. You know, so I, know, I know they're a gay couple. Yeah. Straight out. Okay. Yeah. And well, we or, don't mind, I, but I would get into that later because where yeah, yeah. the family relationship is relevant can be in pickups and kids' safety and that sort of stuff. Yeah, particularly right. if there's a yeah, yeah. order against contact and those sort of things. But yeah. apart from that, again, I, you focus on uh, you're trying to drive this wonderful experience and bring them on a journey. I understand what you're yeah. saying, but first, <laughs> just straight off from the first thing if you go through you don't you don't go and say oh what's she like you know i think so we're at time is that about right yeah, yeah. almost a time but just to help you just to finalize that one what i will observe is get the basics right again are there y1 forms in your hall are there pens awesome is it the current one yes this week's version <laughs> right <laughs> that's right uh, is there a quietish place where parents can fill it in, even if it's in your hall kitchen? It's all, of course nice and neat as well, and they can write it in there. Or, you know, bring it back next week. But is that the right attitude, the first thing they walk in the... No, that's right at the end. No, 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 that's right at the very end, when they're, when they're leaving that night. You have the conversation with them and say, look, we have to capture data, we've got to do the thing, cover your kid by our insurance while they trial it, you know, come for a few weeks, see if scouting's for you. And again, if your basics are right and you're running strong programs and your leaders are engaged, little Johnny comes back, he's had an awesome time, he wants to be a scout, and that's when you start setting the baseline expectation about what the parents want to be. And that's when you start segueing into your longer multi-month project of engaging them consistently, but water dripping on a rock, not overwhelmingly, in the group. All right, bring them through. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just where we, where, I, where we got to, and there was some discussion about technology, um, my, other rule, my other observation around that is scouting, it's often better to ask for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. Because if you ask... If, <laughs> so what we ended up doing in our group was our website. Because the forms, I, I found the forms a killer personally for me as a group leader, right? Particularly if your group's getting very large. Um, we had our webmaster create a form, so it's just a, it just just has all the fields from a Y1 because this is what parents expect, right? That you're filling in something online. They fill it in on all online. We have a little script at the back end that punches all that into the Word doc Y1. The Y1's pre-populated, gets emailed to the parents with a note that says, "This is before they've even turned up. You know, this is when they just registered. A, you know, uh, it says bring this signed copy to your first night, and then, that's how we ended up taking care of any of that. They bought it the first night." Yeah. And even better, when um, they turned up, the, the, we had a system where the section leader would let our group registrar know, and the same data set that they'd filled in on the form, we then pumped into the dibs, for those of you who use dibs, and it created a record automatically. Yeah, uh, ask me afterwards, because it's just a script at the back of a website. And dibs worked with us to do it, because they want to do that too. Why, why are you <coughs> doing that, and you doing that, and you doing that, and it's not happening in space? Go there. Yeah. Or why do we have ScoutLink and now CareMonkey and those of us who use dibs and why can you only have two people access, why can you only have two people, your formation administration officers access ScoutLink when there's more personal data in the dibs system? I don't know, but I love scouting. So I'm prepared to deal with the bureaucratic bits and pieces and um, focus on the fun, the new friendships, the adventure, the outdoors and the new skills and the values. And that's where we all need to be. Yeah. So paperwork's not number six on that list. Look, I think you, yeah, I think, but in the before we did that, you just you need to make the paperwork as smooth as possible yeah. and have a process in your group, and that's for you with your committee that ensures the paper moves, you know, and the kids get their number quickly so they can be invested quickly, so they've paid quickly, because obviously once the payments in the another commitment's made as well. The third, sec, sorry, the third. Yeah. That's right. And this is very important in this day and age because of the interest of kids with special needs, okay? Yep. And we want that's you want to know up front that they might go for high school courses. they don't write that on their own. No, that's exactly <laughs> right. And this is where if you talk to them about the form face to face and say medical, okay. Now 
Now, Freckle, I, I could, we could talk about yeah. the medical side of the Y1 no, form all, all day, and it would be an interesting conversation. Yeah. No, all I'm but I, I'm going to pivot it back a bit. Yeah, up front, you yeah. want to talk to those carers because, like you've just said, okay, you do not get that information until you find out little Johnny had a bed, uh, accident in bed that first hand you've been to. And it's got no, you, you yep. I'm very happy to have a one-on-one -on -one about that because I've got a lot of views in that space. Yeah. What, I want, the, what I wanted to close with was this notion that welcoming a family in the group is a consistent process. So when you've been involved at this beginning or your, your section leader's been involved, having the conversation, unlocking the queue store, talking about it, talking about it in a particular way, addressing the reasons why that family's walked in the hall in the first place. Um, they're growing up in an apartment, they're worried about the screen time. You're differentiating yourself from soccer and netball and cricket and taekwondo and music and dance and gymnastics, right? And you're differentiating that with those five things, fun, new friends, outdoors, adventure, new skills and values, right? That's the Australian, that was Australian Youth Programme Review from Australians, it's very current. That's why people are attracted to scouting, and so scouting, if you deliver that, they retain. Then, you make sure you're working with your leaders in group council and you're coaching them one-on-one, -on -one, that they now take that family on. It's important that they program the um, parent volunteer roster. It's important that they reach out to parents for the cook team or the what. Even if they've got enough people, bring a few more. Bring those parents along, because that's what, that's what solidifies their commitment to the group. And set that baseline expectation early to make sure they've got some skin in the game with your group that it is not a purely uh, transactional experience, that they owe you a little bit, and the way the human mind works is once you've got them a little bit, that's what you can build on over time. And I don't mean that in a mean-spirited way. I mean genuinely take them on a journey about why, to help them understand why you are still in scouting. Mm -hmm. But they can't that see that straight away. Point to that, <coughs> exactly on that point, I think there's a big, competition because little Johnny gets excited when he comes to the Joey night or the club night but he also gets excited when he gets taken to soccer yep. and cricket and he wants to be yep. Alan Border and he wants to be yep. whatever soccer guy there is and so the parents have got a kid who wants to be in everything and I think that the challenge you present very accurately of getting the parents to understand what we're trying to achieve really is the key to it because it's so hard I mean, when they take them to soccer, they know they're going to play soccer. They know exactly what soccer is all about. Yep. Anchoring and tennis and netball and all that stuff. They don't know really how what's going about. And your point, that, you know, about those points about what we're doing, you've got to make that real. And, and I think you only do that, in my mind, by uh, saying the length of time it takes and the character change that you'll see in the child, not the first night, of course, but when they when they've been two or three times and the kid might be waning a little bit because something's happened, something's gone wrong slightly. I want them to hang on to the thought that, that hey, on, if I get him through this and he's here for six years, he will have a better, or she will have a better character. Absolutely. Then that's really right. the difference. That's our differentiation point. That, so sports. I have a genuine view that scouting is a product. And it's a product that's designed to create better human beings who contribute to their world in a better way. And soccer's not, and on, it's not soccer's bad. My 12-year-old just made it into Spirit FC, and those of you who follow soccer know that's a really big achievement, huge commitment. But I still want scouting to be part of his life, because scouting is un it's a unique, so and when we talk about products, we talk about this concept called the unique selling proposition. What is it that makes your product unique from anyone else? Why is, if, if people don't see scouting as different from soccer or cricket or football or rugby or gymnastics or taekwondo or dance or ballet, then we're all in a pickle. It's our role to talk about those unique aspects of scouting. So when the parents actually have to make a call, and it's going to be the parents in con you know, conversation with the little one, you look, you can do soccer and scouts and something else, but you can't do these 15 things you want to do. We need to give them that experience in scouting that is unique and that we know keeps kids in scouting, that they're having that fun. Right? And that's in your programming, in your camps. You know, one of the things I used to talk about the leaders when it came to fun, I always talked about you know, what was the money shot. What was the, you know, like in a movie, you know, the, like in Independence Day, the big money shot was when they blew up the White House. It was the thing that everyone said, that's what that movie's about. When they go on a camp, 
you know, I, I used to say, what is going, what have you programmed that's going to be the first thing they talk about when they get in the car? First thing, what did you program? That one thing, you know, for us it was letting off a skyrocket or they'd build, you know, there's a million things you can do. Or what's the first thing they talk about when they're friends when they get to school on Monday? You know, the fun, and then similarly, you know, what was, what did you embed to make, give them the chance to make new friends? Did you mix them up? Did you camp with another group? Um, you know, did you make sure you're out of the hall? Get out of the hall, get out of the hall, right? Get outside. Then, you know, how did you program in an adventure? How did you put in that responsible risk taking where little Johnny just for a moment went and then succeeded when he was scared? And we all remember when we were young and what that felt like and how we felt about ourselves when we, when we managed to jump that little chasm, right? And then how did you give him that sense of adventure? Um, Little Johnny comes in, all the work's done, and, and that four o'clock or five o'clock, and the other kids get a resentment that, oh, we had to put up the tents and we didn't do anything. I think that's partially setting expectation with the parents. So my kid who's just made a huge commitment to soccer, uh, at the beginning we said, look, here's, there's going to be three nights, three weekends, where he won't be able to play on a Saturday because he'll be at a scouting activity, and we'll let you know what they are when they'll they come go, up. They'll go back to say, that's a team environment where the scout says, Yes, it's a team, but it's not a yeah. regardless in for competition for a trophy. Or yeah, look, it's, it's a fair point, and I think the best you can do is bring parents on the journey like we've talked about and hopefully get them to see scouting in the way that you do. But as I said, the key thing is it's welcoming parents to the group is a multi-month process because your ultimate goal is to recruit and retain little Johnny, but also to recruit and retain little Johnny's parents, committee or leadership. And... As I said at the very beginning of this talk, I'm a, I was a Joey leader, a cub leader, a group leader, and a state commissioner, and I walked into my hall and someone said, do you want to be a leader? And I said, you've got to be kidding. What? Too busy. Far too busy. <laughs> no, no, I can't. Oh, shoes. Right? Can't do it. But now, I think I'm getting the wrap up. Cool. Um, but I, was, I, I experienced that journey. And I've experienced it with my kids and it's been a wonderful part of my life and I'm really glad it's still a part of my life. And when Mr and Mrs Smith walk in the hall, it's trying to see it through their eyes where they know none of the things you know and give them a journey that they can follow where they can see it the way you do. And that's part psychology, it's part the way you communicate and it's part the timing that you deliver the messages that they need to hear about what scouting is. So be proud be excited, be energetic, but don't overwhelm. Time messages so that when you ask them for their commitment, it's after little Johnny's already really excited and wants to stay. Not fair, but it's the way it works. And remember, it's this notion, it's, you can't uh, walk up to someone and say, do you want to get married the day you meet them? I'll say, no, you've got to go, you've got to, take the, you've got to date for a long time to get that commitment. You let them know who you are and what scouting's about and how it can work for them.